Hey folks, Brian Savage here with you. Going to bring you another video today and we're going to talk about the Dunlop Crybaby Wah model CGB95. This is a good friend of mine, Dan's, and uh, this particular petter works fairly well. He's had it for quite some time, but uh, needs wants a couple things done to it. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to make this a true bypass by adding a different switch and doing a little circuitry things in here and I'll do a separate video on just that bypass. I'm also going to add an LED and I'll do a short video on just adding the LED but give you a sneak peek. There's the LED with resistor in series. Going with green, super bright. And uh, also going to clean it and uh, give you my initial assessments in this video. Now um, first off, cleaning it, damp rag, you know, you don't want to saturate it, um, it is electric components and electric and water don't typically mix, so uh, a damp rag, if this rubber on this, this one's actually pretty good, but I've seen these where they've been very deteriorated, the rubber's deteriorated down, you can peel this off and glue on another one, this one here's in good shape, it's just dirty, um, some people really like their stuff shiny, but guys, don't armor all this, because if you do, your foot's going to slide all over the place, and it's going to make the bottom of your shoe sticky, or slicky, rather, for the rest of the gig as well. I've seen guys do it, so don't do that. Just wipe it down really good. If this has got a lot of nastiness caked in it, or you didn't know that you stepped in dog poo, um, you know, you can use your best friend's toothbrush. Just kidding. Um, but no, use a toothbrush on this, and maybe some real light type of solvent, uh, maybe some dishwashing liquid, uh, something along that lines, but uh, I would be, it, very little soap or anything, I wouldn't use anything too harsh on it, um, don't need it, and it'll come clean, wiping the dust out of it and things like that, some of these electric components in here are exposed, so when, like I said, when you're wiping this down in here, be real careful about that, um, also dry it off, don't leave it uh, wet, this is cast aluminum on the housing, and um, as you can see, maybe you won't be able to, but if you can, down in there, and those, eh, the lighting's horrible, but anyway, down in the bottom of here, you can see where there, it looks whitish, chalkish, that's where this aluminum is corroding, yes, aluminum will corrode, um, and we'll clean that up as well. As we go along, that'll be another thing to clean. I just got these finger tight on here. Um, I've already been in it to look at it before I set the camera up. So um, let's open it up and take a look. Now, in speaking to Dan, he's had this pedal a while. I'm not real long, this is an ancient one. The date on that says 2006 right there and I don't know if that is the manufacturing date or the date of this revision revision H I don't know actually what that means I asked Dan about when he got it and he thinks he, he bought it new around 2006 2007 so who knows if that's the date of the revision the date of the patent or the date of manufacture I don't know could be any of the three, I guess, because it's all about around the date. Excuse me while I take a drink of coffee. Ah, nice. Looking inside here, a couple issues right off the bat. If you see inside here, see the connectors? I don't know if you can tell or not, but those are really, really corroded. They're all purple. I know you won't see that, but if you look down inside the jack, I can see down inside the jack. And it's only has one slim. And when I say slim, I say probably the width of that little wire on that. 
where I like, can see a shiny line where the cord's been shoved in and out. Uh, it's fairly shiny here. And then the rest of it looks like that purpley there. Um, I'm going to do some attempts to clean that a bit. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, he said no one had ever been inside of it, and he had bought it new. But typically, that grease does not look like that from the factory. It's not... I mean, if you can see, it's on the screw, it's on the board, it's on the wires, it's on my fingers. Ugh. That's... I mean, they glue it on there from the factory, but... That... I mean, I guess they could have done that from the factory, but who knows. Uh, again, we're also going to set like we're going to change this switch out here to make this a true bypass. Where these indentions are actually on this one right here, which would be on the left side amplifier side of the pedal. That's where I'm going to drill to put that LED in, is right in there in that little indention hole. And again, I'll do a separate video on the LED and on doing the bypass. Uh, when I was talking about the potentiometer earlier, and I was telling you that all the way back, when it's all the way back, and you just first start to come on it, it'll make a little scratch. Again, I'll take this screw, loosen this screw right here, move this plastic circular type item, which just puts tension on it. It, it, it really it looks like a, a cable tie down. And it's against this long gear here that shoves it and holds it against this gear which is attached to the potentiometer. So when it's rolled all the way back like that, I'll loosen that, move this out of the way, pull this part here, pull it back out of the way, roll this potentiometer just past that point of catch, Push that back up against it, put that back up against it, tighten screw back down. It will change, when it's rolled all the way down, it will change the levels. And it will also change, when it's rolled all the way forward, how far that level goes the other way. In the Q-ray, Q-filter, however you want to call it, the swoosh parameter, the wall parameter, will be changed to some degree. I'm only moving it one gear. So it is going to be very, very minute of a change, but it will change it. Now, you can move that more than one gear. You can move it several places. It is not at, it, it's potent, it, it, it's not at its limits on the potentiometer on either direction from the factory setup. It's uh, closer to the ending setting than, the, than fully on, but it's still not fully off. So you have some adjustment both ways uh, and you can change the rate and as you can see I got this grease on my fingers so I'm going to go ahead and pop into this thing and start cleaning it up wiping it down and I'll give you a shot of what it looks like after I've got it all clean and you'll see the difference um, to make it easier I'll go ahead and do this real quick I'm going to take the circuit board out. In order to take the circuit board out, of course you take the four feet off and these rubber feet with the screw in it, typically you can just turn the foot itself and it will come loose. That screw's really tight in there. If not, use your handy dandy screwdriver. After you have the back off, you want to remove this and this. This is a 7 16 socket on a little extension. It's a 7 16 size. That's what it looks like when you take it out. We'll do this one. Okay, there's those. I like to unplug this while the board's still screwed in. I should have unplugged it before I took off those two nuts. I usually do so that the board is supported in case this thing wants to be cantankerous. 
Uh, it did not. It unplugged fairly easy. Pull these leads up out of the way so they don't get any more in the goop. Obi. My cat's under here on the desk part. And now we'll remove this screw. That screw right there. It's only one screw. It's the only thing we need to remove. Inside. Once we've got it unplugged. And the circuit board, as you can see, pops right out. Hmm. Inspection inside, not bad. No dust bunnies or anything underneath there. No real corrosion on the inside, so it doesn't look like it's been a water baby. But we're definitely going to clean all that grease out of there. Let me pause while I clean out that grease. You don't need to watch me do that. Hey guys, back here with you. Um, we got a lot of this grease cleaned out of here. It's not so greasy now. All that excess that was built up, there's still, we want to leave a little in here. We'll leave a little on the teeth. But the big gloops, it's all up the sides and places where it don't even touch. All over the wires. We cleaned all that up. Now, I was telling you about earlier when this is rocked all the way back. That it has a little bit of a, a catch feel to it. As well as a little bit of static to it. And uh, to adjust that, we're actually going to adjust the rate in which this potentiometer will turn. How we're going to do that, loosen this screw on this glorified, sorry, it's hard to do this and make it where you can see. Make sure it is all the way back. Pull this little gear out of the way. And that is that pot all the way back. I'm going to move it forward. One, two. One tooth. Tighten that back up. See, now what that did was, is now when it's rolled all the way back, the rate has changed, because now when it's rolled all the way back, it's not as turned this as far as it did before. And it is less when it's that way. So, it did change the rate a little bit. You can change a lot of the voicing of your wah by adjusting that parameter right there. Um, adjust it to your liking. Um, Dan's pretty pleased with the performance of his pedal and how it sounds, so we didn't really want to change it past that as far as that aspect of the sound goes. In other words, he likes the cue. He doesn't want to change the cue. He wants to change some parameters within the cue, which we'll do by replacing and switching out some components on this, but the cue he wanted to stay pretty much the same. So the um, oh, inductor, that'll stay the same. We're not going to change that out. Uh, again, what we are going to do is we're going to add an LED that I'll, again, drill right there in. And uh, we're also going to make this true bypass where we'll be switching out this switch. That switch, we'll be switching that out. And I'll show you all that in another video. Um, I'm just going to finish cleaning it, cleaning that chalky corrosion out of these jacks, why I got all the, the circuit board out of it. Um, wipe it all down at this point. Um, hmm, this is the hardest thing in life for me to do is not peel this off of here. It's one of my favorite things to do. It is my bubble wrap, if you will. I don't pop bubble wrap, but peeling these things off, love it. Now this is a again a 2006 somewhere around in there pedal. He's had it on there all this time. I'm gonna leave it on there for you, Dan. But you're killing me, man. I want to peel it bad. I want to peel it so bad. But I won't. 
All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video for today. And uh, next time you see this, we'll be doing the modifications to the board, getting this board ready by adding in some leads in some correct places. So if you're going to be watching the next video and you want to follow along, get yourself some leads, get yourself an LED with the proper resistor. You will have to have a resistor. And uh, you also need the switch. The switch. Unfortunately, I don't have the switch right now. Uh, so I'm actually going to try to put in the LED and see if it works just by using it off this switch. Should. No reason why it shouldn't. Um, and uh, again, that's going to be another video. And I'll be back at you with that one for now. Guys, as always, share music. Share the love.